So, you read that the average starting salary for a data scientist is almost $100,000. And the average starting salary for an analyst, somewhere around seventy-five. dollars And all of a sudden, you're certain that data science or analytics is the path for you. What's up guys, it's Aaron here, and I hate to burst your bubble, but I'm gonna give you three reasons that you should not get into data science and analytics. But first, if you could, please hit the like button below. It helps me out a lot. So I alluded to it before, one of the main reasons people wanna get into data science and analytics is because of that sweet, sweet paycheck. Some data scientists can make $100,000 right out of college, and some analysts can make $80,000, $90,000 right out of college, but there's something you need to know about those statistics. Most of these average salary figures that you see are pulled up by either people with more experience than you, and even if you take care of that, they're pulled up by people that live in high cost of living areas like New York and Los Angeles. Maybe you wanna work in New York or Los Angeles, maybe you wanna work in a place that has a really high cost of living, but keep that in mind when you're looking at these salary figures, and also keep in mind that $100,000 in New York or Los Angeles is not as much as it is in Cleveland, Ohio, or Richmond, Virginia, or other more reasonable places to live. If you look in places like that, what you're most likely gonna see is that a lot of data science jobs are not starting at 100K. They're starting at 75. And a lot of data analyst jobs are not starting at 75. They're starting at 45 or 50. Now, sometimes that's still a really good salary, particularly depending on where you live, but it's not 100 and it's not 80. So just try to keep that in mind when you're looking at these figures. Now, if you were just interested for the salary, perhaps you've already fallen off this video and we can get to the more important stuff. The second sign you shouldn't get into data science and analytics is you're not naturally curious. Do you often find yourself pondering life's mysteries, reading a philosophy book and listening to an electrical engineering podcast all at the same time? No? You might not be cut out for this. Jokes aside, you do need a certain natural curiosity to succeed in this field. And this is mainly for two reasons. Number one, new technologies come along all the time. And if you're not naturally curious about them, you're never going to be able to keep up. You're going to need a combination, in fact, of that curiosity and work ethic to spend your free time learning these new technologies. So if you're not interested in new technologies and you're not interested in teaching yourself stuff, this isn't the field for you. Now, the second place that natural curiosity helps you is just with the job. You have to be able to examine problems from different angles, and you have to be curious enough to want to do that without being told to. A lot of times you're going to have to go a little bit deeper than where the average person would stop to get the real answer. If you're content with just taking instructions and building out a Tableau dashboard, maybe you could get a job, but you're not going to go very far. You always have to know what you're looking for and why. And that can be really difficult because a lot of times the people that are bringing you projects don't even know that themselves. The third thing I'd say is that if you're not sociable and you can't communicate well, this isn't it for you. You have to be able to communicate your ideas and work effectively in teams with non-technical people, otherwise you're not going to make it. Sure, you could probably get a job as an entry-level data analyst, but you might never get promoted to senior analyst. You're certainly never going to make it to management. That's because data science and analytics sits really close to the business in most companies. You're gonna be working with non-technical people, managers, salespeople, VPs, CEOs, people who don't necessarily have the same technical skill set as you, but need to understand how and why your analysis is valid in order for them to trust it and in order for it to really ultimately drive business outcomes, which is why these roles tend to pay pretty well. You're gonna to need to be able to distill and explain the importance of your really cool deep learning algorithm or your gradient boosted machine to someone who last took a math class in high school and probably never took a coding class. If you thought you were just going to be sitting in a dark room coding away for 40 hours listening to trance music on full volume, this isn't the career field for you. Is that what software engineers do? I don't know, maybe look into that, but this isn't it. Look, there's a ton of reasons why data science and analytics might not be a great fit for you, but keep in mind, you're never gonna find a perfect career path. For a lot of people, that just doesn't exist. But if you're only interested in data science for the money, you're not naturally curious, and you can't communicate very well, I'd look elsewhere. 
All right, so that's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. Like I said before, leave a like if you found this video helpful. Leave a comment if you've got questions. I respond to every single one of them. And if you haven't, definitely subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.